My name is Jeff Jolly and I'm a fish biologist working for the Fish and Wildlife Service on the uh, Lamprey Research Team. We're at the mouth of the White Salmon River, uh, real close to the Columbia River here, and we are doing some larval Pacific lamprey sampling. Use a deep water electrofisher and suction dredge combination to look for lamprey in these deeper waters in the sediments. So we're out here surveying for lamprey and uh, kind of a before condit dam removal survey. Uh, when they remove that dam there's going to be a lot of sediment that comes down the system and may create more of a what we'd call natural river delta uh, with nice substrate and shallower water and the prediction would be that there might be even more suitable habitat for larval lamprey. When we're out surveying for lamprey we really don't have a lot of knowledge of the basic biology and ecology of these species. There's uh, considerably more uh, known about for example, the sea lamprey uh, on the East Coast and in the Great Lakes region, but comparatively we know much less about some of the basics of Pacific lamprey and Western brook lamprey, which are native species out here on, um, in the Pacific Northwest. So anytime we're out doing these surveys, we're just kind of gathering new basic and biological information as well. So for example, um, when we manage and monitor the salmon out here in the Pacific Northwest, there's been a lot of research going on over the years and we know a lot more than we used to about salmon. We know things like they home to their natal streams and we have ways of counting them and estimating abundance and survival. And these are things, basic things that we just don't have for lamprey. We sort of see them in the tributaries as larvae and really don't ever see them again in any number really until they return as adults. So everything that happens in their life stage in between that time is, is a black hole. And the work that we're doing, for example, in the White Salmon River, just understanding how they move down a tributary system uh, will help start filling in those gaps that we have in our knowledge. So our sampling process uh, involves a, a deep water electrofishing device. We lower that to the bottom, and the way that it works is it's, it's electrified, so we can deliver electrical current to the sediment, and it's sort of what we call the tickle charge, which should agitate or tickle the amacetes out of the substrate and then at the same time a suction pump is running and they should uh, theoretically get drawn up through that pump uh, through the hose and we filter that out through our collection basket. We anesthetize them, uh, identify them to species, take total length and also take a fin clip for uh, genetic confirmation of identification and finally we recover them and release them back uh, into the river. Concurrent to each time we uh, take a lamprey sample I also take a sediment sample. I do that using an Ekman dredge. I lower it to the bottom and I get a sample of the sediment and I bring that back to the lab and we determine the mean particle size of that sediment and also the organic content. Um, and this is in hopes to perhaps relate uh, areas where we find or where we don't find uh, larval lamprey, uh, what sort of sediment they may prefer. Future research will, will benefit from some of these things that we're doing, um, partly because there's so little known about the biology and ecology of these species and the fact that they're declining so rapidly, we're really challenged to put some management and conservation actions in place when there's still a lot of basic questions that need to be answered. So uh, every little piece that we fill in when we're out there uh, will help direct that future conservation.